Tonight, we watched the third movie of a trilogy, which is basically a remake of the second movie, which itself wasn't supposed to be part of this franchise, and in fact is a sequel to the first movie in an entirely different franchise. <laughs> but somehow it works for me because all the movies are pretty great. We watched Hard to Die or Sorority House Massacre 3. Hail Jim <laughs> Wynorski. Woohoo! Stabby, stabby. And welcome back to another episode of Stabby Stabby, the podcast that watches weird, obscure horror and thriller movies uh, and lets you know if they're worth watching. And most of the time, they 100% are. <laughs> I am Greg, and uh, tonight I'm drinking a Double Dangerous Dan Double IPA by hey. Warwick Farm Brewing and 8.2 The Juice Bomb. Uh, how about you, my dangerous Dan? Hey, how are you drinking? I can't imagine double Dan. That would be dangerous. Hey, I'm uh, right now. I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Thanks uh, mostly uh, to being halfway finished this Brooklyn Brewery Black Chocolate Stout. It's a ten percent and one hundred percent of my attention and affection. Eric, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. Looks like we're all on the uh, the heavy beer train tonight. Um, must be that time of year. I'm doing a. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. I am rocking a KBS Maple Mackinac Ooh. Fudge 2020 Founders Imperial Stout. A description uh, almost as long as our movie. Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> it's got some fudge coffee and some maple and chocolate, and it's aged in uh, oak bourbon barrels. I wasn't done yet, Dan. I'm still. I'm still rolling on that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not mean to interrupt this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Marathon train. <laughs> yeah, he, he he bought it from a uh, grizzly bear hibernation cave. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. maybe just yeah. to make it weirder. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. He, he found the cave by following the directions of a creepy old man that was the only employee at a gas station. Yes, I entered a portal into hell, and uh, now I'm drinking <laughs> it. Man, speaking of entering a portal into hell and then drinking it, this movie was a tall glass of water, and I really enjoyed myself. I really enjoyed... I shouldn't say that with this movie. Hold on. That was, that was the wrong way to word enjoying this movie, is saying enjoyed I really your, enjoyed myself. With your, oh, I enjoyed myself with, for the whole with, hour and 17 minute runtime. With both my hands. <laughs> oh. All uh, right. How, how did we land on this movie? Um, well, we actually, I, I have not had this movie, um, physically because I don't think it's ever been released outside of like VHS. Um, Greg doesn't Dan consider I, uh, owning a movie, owning a movie until he's been able to have it physically. Yeah. By well, which listen, I mean that that's, there's a reason there's a hole in the middle of a, of a Blu-ray. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I won't go into that, but, uh, <laughs> no, Dan and I picked this up from VHS PS, uh, at Monster Mania, uh, convention. Uh, and I had forgotten that this movie is the third Sorority House Massacre movie until I started watching it, and I go, oh man, I have seen this before, because uh, uh, I watched all of them, and I think all the Slumber Party Massacre movies kind of back-to-back, uh, -back, and I believe Eric pretty much did as well, maybe a couple years ago, yes, <laughs> so yes. um, this brought back fond memories. Did the, did the VHSBS booth guy just like long wink at you when you bought it? <laughs> Um. Yes, uh, but he was he was a nice guy, and he didn't judge us uh, for the the six discs that we bought from him. Um. But yeah, no, I uh, I I I think the synopsis basically was like, uh, it's it's five women in a in a high rise, and they wear lingerie the whole movie and shoot guns. It's like, all right, <laughs> that's all I need to know. I read the description out loud and I think, Greg, didn't you say something like, oh, it's like women in underwear die hard? And I was like, yep, I want this movie done. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I like it pretty good. I, I had no uh, recollection of the name, but at like two minutes in it, I was like, oh yeah, I've seen this. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember those women from, <laughs> I could pick him out of a lineup. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen scenes in this movie many times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I might have been remembering uh, Scream Queen Hot Tub Party, maybe, because it's all over that movie uh, in that one, too. My yeah. my memory might be a little foggy, but what on the podcast was the last like straight-up sexploitation movie that we watched? <sighs> I would say Evils of the Night, and that was so long ago. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. 
it's been yeah. a it's been a it's been a hot minute since we had a good like steamy dip into this exploitation genre. Maybe mausoleum, but it's mm. not quite as like yeah. sleazy <laughs> as Evils of well. the Night was, or this movie. So, uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a while, and I personally needed a return to sleaze horror. So, and I honestly, I think, I think it succeeded. Hey, you're gonna kick off the new year. You might as well go all out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think before we started recording, Eric, you said that uh, watching this movie reminded you why you got into horror movies when you were 12. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 12-year-old me was like, this is fantastic. And 48-year-old, soon-to-be 48-year-old me was also like, this is fantastic. So <laughs> not much has changed in my changed in my psyche since, since then. Ah, oh, man. 36 years, and horror movies still have their staying power. Mm, that's worthwhile. I don't know. What, what do you what do you think? Should we dive into this plot? I want to I want to learn more about what these ladies. Why are these ladies in the skyscraper? Let's let's answer these questions. Yep. Well, strap on that G string because we're <laughs> on our way. <laughs> and uh, discuss a little bit of hard to die. Now let's get to the plot. So, 1990's Hard to Die, directed by the wonderful Jim Wynorski, uh, opens up on the title, Hard to Die, and some opening credits, and some not-so-great synth music, <laughs> and this is another movie where the credits are uh, way too fucking long. I, the synth music was straight up like knockoff N64 Goldeneye. Did you guys get like a Goldeneye <laughs> connection? Mm, nice. It's something that sounded very familiar, and a lot of the music in this movie, I'm just like... Is that Star Wars? <laughs> because that sounds like Star Wars. And then it changes like key a little bit. And I'm like, ah, maybe I was wrong. But I thought that about eight times during the movie. So I think I'm it's thinking, the movie and not me. I, yeah. I, didn't you, I think you whispered that to me on your wedding day when you were up at the altar. You're just like, Dan, is, is this Star Wars? <laughs> is this Star Wars? Is, is, this everything, Star Wars? is everything Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> he just collapses well, into a pile of dust. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, and that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, from our horrible, horribly long opening credits, we cut to a woman firing an assault rifle and wishing out loud, let it be over. How could this have happened? So you, you assume the beginning is the end, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, wait, did you not think that? Yeah, I, I thought it. That. Oh yeah, I thought it. I don't know why. I, maybe because I had seen it already and I forgot that I'd <laughs> seen true, it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Sorority House Massacre 2 also starts that way. Yeah. What, showing the so. final kill and then... Has like a kill at the beginning. Can we, Should we... No, so it's not the final kill. Do you want to get this out of the way, Greg? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> um, well, I'll do my best. Please jump in. Uh, I don't have any notes <laughs> in front of me, so I'm going to... I think I texted you earlier my thoughts on it. So, um, all right. Slumber Party Massacre is the uh, prequel to this movie. Um, and this is the third movie in Sorority House. What is it? Sorority House Massacre. Sorority <laughs> House Massacre series. But, and you, you, you touched on this in your intro, but this is a remake of Sorority House Massacre Part 2, which is also a sequel to Slumber House, right? Uh, which is uh, a Slumber Party thing. Massacre. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm brutalizing this. Sorry, but it's start. also a sequel to Sorority House Massacre right. 1, even though the killer in Sorority House Massacre is not the same as in Slumber Party Massacre, but the Slumber Party Massacre killer shows up uh, in Sorority House Massacre 2, and then um, is is the ghost, well, he's a ghost in both. Spoiler alert, He's a there's a ghost <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> in Hard to Die. Um. Yeah. So I don't know how that works or why it works, but it's fine. And both franchises have. So the first one, Slumber Party, has two sequels that aren't associated with any of this. The second one, which is freaking fantastic, <laughs> yeah, with so the, dr the Driller Killer, and yeah. then and then this series has a first movie that's not associated with anything, but the second and third are associated with Slumber Party. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I it, mean, it makes it, it all makes sense when you think about it. There's a Wikipedia page. It's just for massacre move the massacre movies uh, that explains it all. It even has a freaking grid. It doesn't really matter, but uh, 
it's interesting and it's a convoluted mess. I mean, that's a lot of backstory for a movie that has like a 12 minute long multi shower sequence. <laughs> <laughs> You need to know why you're getting there. So, works for me. You know, it's it's about the uh, it's about the end point, not the destination. <laughs> and there's a Roger Corman connection, right? So, is it true that Corman's wife funded t- number two, and then what we're watching is three, and this is Corman funded, and there it's a remake of the same movie in the same year, 1990. Wow. Yeah. Except so, so what I had what I had heard was that uh, Roger Corman and his wife were going on vacation. Jim Wynorski wanted to make a movie, so his wife uh, basically just said, "Hey, just go in and make a movie. You got a week." Um, so he did, and um, Roger Corman ended up really liking it, and told him he he had like space from another movie still like rented out that he wasn't using, which is like the high rise apartment or uh, like uh, office building. Mm-hmm. Uh, for this movie and he was like oh just make another make a movie here uh, just make a sequel or just make a remake of of sorority house massacre 2 so he did and it, that is exactly what it is yeah i think this is the superior movie but it's essentially the same movie one's in a sorority house one's in an office building they just like ratcheted up some of the jokes and some of the characters in this one and some of the boobs yeah that's awesome that's all you need what a twisted um, web we weave yeah. To murder so, college um, students. All right. So I just wanted to get that out of the way so we weren't like fumbling through it in the middle of all the plot. Yeah. And I hope everybody took notes because <laughs> yeah. be that's a, going to be really important uh, never, never in your no. life. So <laughs> Actually, when you watch this movie, there there is a Star Wars opening crawl where it explains all of this. Just so you understand <laughs> yeah. the backstory. Yeah. yeah before you get uh, it. It's really di- appreciate it's that. It's a diagram. Yeah. But the font, all of the words are like they're spelled out with bras. It's really hard to read. <laughs> It's like that time travel movie where you you need like a diagram to figure it out. Yeah. When the punctuation's like splatter. It's takes great. place in a refrigerator or something. What was that movie? <laughs> I can't remember. You know what I'm talking about? I know which yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember. It's a very, it's an indie film. Yeah. I don't know what right? movie is takes place in a refrigerator. What? It's not a refrigerator, it's just a little box. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, someone sent me a like a grid and I was like, if I need this, uh it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fine. I don't need to ever watch that movie again. All right, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we cut to earlier that day. Uh, we see a big high-rise office building, and we meet two of our characters, Dawn and Tess, uh, two girls who work for Acme Lingerie, and they're working on Saturday to do inventory. Uh, they go inside the building, and they meet up with two other girls, Shane and Jackie. And Tess comments that she has a date with Walter Paisley that night, who is one of the biggest agents in town. Um, and Walter Paisley um, is a character uh, normally played or, ha- or has been played by uh, Dick Miller, the great Dick Miller. Nice. Um, so he, he also uh, shows up as Walter Paisley in Chopping, Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, and I believe it's, it's implied that uh, Walter Paisley's not just an agent, but a porno agent. <laughs> I believe it really seemed like that, but maybe I'm wrong. I think you're right. Um, yeah. All right. So they, uh, the four girls are about to take the elevator up to uh, Acme Lingerie. I think it's on the eighth floor. And uh, as the door opens, we get a large, creepy, gross, quiet man named Orville Ketchum. Oh, I, re- I reject oh. your word gross. Oh, I reject well, that. He's he a big like teddy he's... bear of a man, and I love him. I, I loved him at first sight. I had little hearts for eyeballs the second I mean, he you came have on a screen. Th- you have a thing for fat, hairy, sweaty men, which is why you hang out with me. I understand. <laughs> he wear, wears flannel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. He kind of dressed just flannel. like you, yeah. Greg. Yeah. Yeah, and me. He, yeah, we, me and Orville go way back uh, <laughs> in our genealogy. Uh, I wanted to, like, uh, cheer but... at his reveal. He's the best. He really he is. is. Oh, he this, he is great. This I, is his movie. Yeah. It, it, it is. His, this fucking character. Oh my god! Every single thing he does is a bad idea, and it's just wonderful. And all he has to do, if he could just say a sentence at a normal time where a human would say a sentence, it like so many of the plot conflicts would be resolved. But he doesn't. Yeah. He just like stumbles. Yeah. He's the best. He's the best, and I love him. I love him with all my heart. He's my son. <laughs> he is he is Dan's son and also the janitor of the building. Come for the One ladies, janitor, stay for the janitor for the whole building. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
That's, yeah, for, that's the slogan forget, this movie needed. Forget the shower scenes. It's all about Orville eating a sandwich and like, yeah. you know, with yeah. meat falling out of his mouth. Uh, and, and Orville Ketchum was also in Sorority House Massacre 2. And we have a couple returning uh, characters from that movie. Um, so while they're waiting for the elevator, uh, the girls receive a package, and uh, the uh, I'll say. the the delivery man uh, was pretty rude and crude and not a cool dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, can I can I interrupt you there to say that there at this point of the movie we we are introduced what is it like four or five women at this point have come in? No, four, four of them. Four, and they'll meet yes. the fifth on the top floor. Yeah. The, so the four women have walked in over the course of introducing us to them. They cross paths with three young men. And all three of the young men, they just mock and make fun of to their faces. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. all three of them. The, my yeah. favorite one was outside when there were, the two of the ladies <laughs> met up outside, and they just walked by a guy who's just minding his own business, and they're like, check out the guy. And what they say? Check out the guy in the suit. What a dork. God, get a load of the guy in the ice cream suit. What a dork. <laughs> oh, they called him a milkman. That's it. Check out the yeah. milkman. Because it was a white suit. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Nowadays, you call him Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I like to think the actors were just being themselves. They just like kind of filmed it. Like, you know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I can't imagine there was much of a script for this. No. Not if it was written in seven days. Yeah. Or less. But I, like that. I, I thought it was filmed fun. in seven days. <laughs> Both. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, Everybody's shitty to each other. It's great. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. Well, th- some of the girls, I mean, they tease each other, but like, it, yeah, they're <laughs> everybody's shitty to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Um. All right. So, uh, yeah, they get the package. Um, Orville. Did you point uh, yes. out what the uh, delivery man said to the women when he walked in? Uh, I don't recall. He strides into the camera frame and he looks over all the ladies and goes, "Hola, babes." <laughs> and I, I had to you, thank I'd, you for pointing that out. <laughs> I had to pause the movie to just like let that settle in. It had to wash over me. I rubbed that into my skin like moisturizer. Greg, now you have to insert that audio. You have no choice. Hola, babes. Oh, man. All right. So uh, while they're waiting for uh, they get the package, Orville comes back up the elevator. He had gone down. Now he's back up and he scares the girls again. Um, uh, th- now he, he starts walking <laughs> off. The best. He starts walking off and, and Dawn gets him to tell his side of the story, um, uh, basically recapping what happened in uh, Slumber Party Massacre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With, with with the driller killer, yeah, and we we get a we it's get awesome. a p- pretty decently long clip recap of uh, of Sumber Party Massacre one, um, but he ultimately tells them. Um, no, that... I, sorry, <laughs> I just want it's fifteen minutes of another movie in this movie. Yeah, oh yeah, which is yeah. what I want in my movies is fifteen but minutes get, of, a, of another movie. It's the best. What's weird is we get clips from Slumber Party Massacre, and then he starts talking about how. The killer was um, Clive Hochstetter's spirit who was responsible for the murders, but that not, was in not Sorority true. House Massacre right. 2, so they didn't even show clips from that. Nope. Um, but most of the girls don't believe him. They think that he uh, he was the murderer, but somehow he got he got he got off of it. So um, they uh, they then that uh, they then go uh, into the elevator and go upstairs to start their Saturday morning inventory work. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Someone's, yeah, and you might as well have... I, I don't know what jobs they have there. Um, they, they just, I would have quote assumed they were models. Inventory. Yeah. No, I th- I, my impression was that they don't usually work there, but they, like, come in to help out with inventory sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Is that wrong? No, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Okay. All right. I mean, I guess it ultimately doesn't matter. Dawn seems pretty knowledgeable about where everything is in this building, so maybe she works there. Maybe she lives in the vents. Oh, she could. She's small. She could live in the vents. She's a little little rat girl. It's like house ba- think... housebound, except she just lives in this office building. Yeah. Can, can we talk about their costumes really quick? Their uh, the, what they're wearing to Let, do this inventory work. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to hear are... Dan describe their costumes in <laughs> they're, they're... weird detail. <laughs> they're, they're five women who are here to work a late night inventory shift. Like the the vibe is that they're going to be there like all night, like working yeah. through these boxes in the basement. It's going to be a whole thing. And yeah, the, the labor that we see them doing throughout the movie is going through a dusty basement that's like dimly lit, 
hauling boxes up and down this elevator shaft and then like what sorting through what are in the boxes i guess i guess that's what inventory work is don't Mm. add me yeah um they all show up in like half of them are in clubbing dresses and heels and then the other half are in like daisy dukes and tied off um like crop tops and also heels and later on, we'll have scenes with all five of them. Like they're they're not able to like move their legs very far apart because their clothes are so skin tight. They don't have full range of motion with their arms because like their straps are all falling low and like pulling their arms in. All that like they're it just looks so uncomfortable and it's so fucking funny. I I could not stop laughing every time I saw them doing like manual labor, dressed like they just came from the club. I thought it was so funny. What's great is it. You need to get them in the lingerie from those outfits. <laughs> like that's not yeah. enough. You know. Right. There has yeah. to be a scenario where the it gets even more ridiculous. And I mean they are like capital I candy. Like they're they're all gorgeous. They're everybody's great to look at. And then yeah, yeah, the movie is a, a gradient of sleaze. It just gets Yeah. I would have liked to have seen <laughs> like Orville go through the same situation yeah. that they, they did. Yeah. Like like all of a sudden like he gets sprayed with water and he's like, Well, I got to take my clothes off and take a shower. And then he the gets, end of the movie, <laughs> he just wears lingerie the rest of the movie, you know, just assless be... chaps and a, and a big, <laughs> like a cod piece. <laughs> Still doesn't talk, but man, he looks the part. Just eating a sandwich. is just dropping all over his <laughs> chest hair. There's a piece of ham just dangling on his cod piece for 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah. The sandwich eating really affected me. If you can't tell, it was probably the most horrific <laughs> thing in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I called that out in, okay. in my notes. Don't okay. worry. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we'll let you talk through it. Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> um, all right, so they get up to the office, and they realize that the package they received was meant for somewhere else. Uh, their uh, address was, like, one word off from another place. Um, we also see that their boss, uh, Brad Plimpton, uh, was uh, just – he just got uh, done banging the new employee – uh, in his office, the new employee is Diana, and um, she's going to also help with the inventory uh, this evening. Uh, like Dawn... <laughs> Diana was in a job interview, yeah. and clearly they just had sex, and that was the job interview. And he, he asked her, like, can you type? And she pretty much says no. He's like, what, can you write? And she says no. And he's like, what do you do then? And she pretty much is just like, well, I'll fuck you. And she got yeah, the she job. Said she's, she said she's good at overtime. You know what I wish... I wish just once I'd go to an interview and actually have it be an interview. What are you beefing about? You got the job, didn't you? You should know I'm no whiz when it comes to computers, Mr. Plimpton. No big deal. One of the girls can show you the ropes. How's your typing? Well, if you're not too worried about accuracy, 14 words a minute. Shorthand? Forget it. That's like trying to learn a foreign language, and I was never any good at that either. Well, what are you good at? Overtime. He has kiss like kisses all over his face too. You know, yeah, like, uh, yeah, very cartoony yeah. Uh, lipstick kisses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like Bugs Bunny. He just hired Bugs Bunny and drag. <laughs> I mean, he kind of did. I mean, not yeah. really, but that's yeah. the vibe. I mean, it, it's totally it, it the gets vibe. there. It yeah. gets there basically. Um, all right, so uh, oh Dawn shit, calls... it does get there. Oh yeah, my god, pretty much accidental. Now I'm pointing out that was foreshadowed, guys. That was foreshadowing. All right, nice. wait, wait until you get to the end of this episode. That'll pay off. Uh, so Don calls the uh, phone number for the address on the package. Uh, it was meant for a museum uh, and specifically for Dr. Newton. Um, Dr. Newton calls the shipping company uh, and uh, they, they basically were like, well, we didn't we didn't deliver a package there. Um, and they're like, but it must, sounds like an important package. And he's like, the do- Dr. Newton just basically just goes like, I don't even know what the package is. <laughs> I, love that. Not expecting I it. love that. They're like, this, we could write five pages or we could write a sentence. So the sentence <laughs> yeah. is actually, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then we do, we do cut to the box, which starts smoking and shaking. Um, so something's going on with this old box. Um, the girls uh, end up going down to the basement, uh, but as they're going, they run into uh, Orville. Creepy, creepy, sweet Orville again. Get that key. Uh, 
And uh, another uh, joke that's reminiscent or basically just taken from Sorority House Massacre 2, uh, he reaches into his pants very seductively <laughs> uh, to get the keys to Ex- the basement. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh, he's, he's pretty much just creeping up the place pretty big. Pretty big time, I think. Now, you say creeping up. I, I think he's like a big walk. I, if I want a robotic teddy bear that looks like him just wandering around. Like, you know those robots they have at, like, grocery stores now? That, yeah, yeah. Like, monitor stuff? I want them all to look like him. I would love that. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Yeah. I want Orville um, leaning over me, judging my choice in Parmesan cheese brands. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you want this cheese. <laughs> he wouldn't say that. He would just, like, open his mouth and a crumble of better cheese would fall out. <laughs> oh, he'd, have to, he'd have to reach in his pants and pull out a better cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I like no, wait, in a, uh, do we, do we, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I I like in Slumber Party, um, when he gives the the key to the one girl, not different movie. Uh she's like, Oh, it's still warm and they all kinda like <laughs> yeah. giggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. There there was a yeah. line there was like a throw away line in the previous scene that Greg just described where it was after the job interview when the guy that runs the lingerie shop like explains what their job's gonna be. Um after he leaves the room, the girls are all kind of huddled and commiserating about how they're going to get their work done or whatever. And I can't remember why she says it, but one of them, I think it was Tess, says like, oh, I'd rather slit my own throat than do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Totally Jeez. throwaway line, but it ends up paying off. Yeah. So I got it. I love foreshadowing. I got I to gotta say it when I spot it. Yeah. And for a movie that was written uh, probably on some sort of bender. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, you take the foreshadowing you can get, even though he wrote this movie before, also probably on a similar bender. <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to say he didn't write this movie on a bender. I think they made this movie on a bender and they wrote it as they went along. <laughs> this this movie wrote itself as it was being made. Yeah, uh, that would make sense considering all the scenes are basically just repetition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I mention the 12 minutes of showering? Sorry, go ahead. Eric. Oh, we're gonna get well, there. We're getting there, though. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to talk about Tess, Melissa Moore, the actress. Yeah, she's in a ton of stuff. She was in Evil Spawn. She is the girlfriend in Samurai Cop, Peggy. She's in all the Samurai oh, Cop movies. Oh no, shit! Yeah, she's Bunny in Invisible Maniac, which I think we gotta rewatch that. Yeah, I think we might have also gotten that from huh. VHSBS. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely did. Um. And then I'm trying to find my my note from Boobapedia. Um, <laughs> oh yes, she was also the bimbo student in Repossessed, which is like an Exorcist ripoff. So, um, oh, and she's in, she's great. Yeah, she's she's fantastic. She's in a bunch of crap, but uh, yes, yeah, her her so character uh, or her and uh, the the girl who plays Dawn were both in Sorority House Massacre too just playing different characters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so now the girls all go down to the basement, all five of them. And, uh, all five. All five. <laughs> and start getting uh, all the boxes together for the inventory. Every box that they need to look at is labeled with um, old printer paper that says Acme Lingerie on the front. <laughs> and um, uh, it's, it's, it's hot and gross in the basement. And uh, they decide to take the boxes up to the office. Um, but while they're doing that, Diana uh, has been, uh, no, I'm sorry, Tess has been uh, smoking a cigarette in the basement, uh, and uh, she throws her cigarette away, uh, which causes like a little fire and all the sprinklers to go off, so now they're all <laughs> dirty and wet. Can, can oh, I, boy. Um, Before we get they, they, into the wet t-shirt, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, she was, her lo- I don't know why you would ever stop us from getting there. <laughs> Come on, Eric. We're so close. Her her line is like, I've got enough dust in my lungs to fill a vacuum cleaner. And she's smoking <laughs> a cigarette while she's saying yeah. the line. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Yep. I love the idea of like a sprinkler system being so hypersensitive to debris in a warehouse that's full of dust. Like It's probably not the best place to store shit. Or I don't know. It was just kind of surprising to see a sprinkler system go off, and they're all just like, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. Turn it off. It's fine. Everything will dry. I mean, luckily, um, as the, the the sprinklers are going off and everybody's getting wet, there is a uh, big sign on the wall that just says water valve with, I think, an arrow <laughs> pointing. Yeah. <laughs> so they know exactly where to turn it off. It is totally a cartoon. It's great. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, so now they're all uncomfortable, but they start lugging boxes up. With wet t-shirts. Uh, to the eighth floor. With, yeah, they're with, all wet. They're with, all just wet. Wet t-shirts wet, dirty, and, and crop tops and skin tight mini skirts and yeah. Yeah. I, I shouted up. Uh, my wife walked through the room while I was watching this and I paused it on the shot of them all carrying boxes and I pointed to her and I was like, is this how you would dress if you had to do an overnight like warehouse gig? And she was like, yes, that's what we would do. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how we would dress. <laughs> so she assures me this is, checks, this is accurate. Yeah. Checks out. Yeah, and just like every movie I watch, my wife came down during the first shower scene. And she, <laughs> saw it, she was like, yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> I would expect uh, nothing less. Uh, all right, so uh, as as the uh, as the girls are walking the boxes up uh, to the eighth floor, uh, we cut to a little scene with Orville. He's reading an Inquirer like newspaper um, that says on the front, Evil spirits can steal your soul. Mm. Um, and he's, he's also eating what looks to be a raw meat sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it don't you? Pretty good. No. I like my chicken cooked rare. It it looked like like chip steak uncooked, yeah. Yeah. just like on a piece of white bread. Slumber party massacre. He's just eating raw meat. So at least they put. <laughs> at least he had okay. like bread. He's- Bread in this yeah. one, you know. He's my son. I love him so much. I'm <laughs> Lisa, so proud of him. It wasn't a meat on meat sandwich in this one. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. The, uh, the, they... the KFC double down? You talking about a piece of meat Ooh. for bread? I never yeah. got a double down. I'm, I regret it. You that's know, my one biggest regret in my life. <laughs> I never have had one, but I can tell you, I know somebody who's had like six of them and lived to tell the tale. Wow. I wish it was me. Yeah, he's 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 got he's got some kind of will to not live. Can we have him on the next steal. episode? Because I want to <laughs> yeah. talk to him. That's the horror movie that we're gonna watch next. It's it's also a sex exploitation, but it's internal. <laughs> it's how he's fucking his own guts. We just listen yeah. to him eat it for like forty five minutes, <laughs> and just groaning for forty five uh, minutes after. Just comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh after our meat sandwich uh we uh we have tess giving a call to her agent uh walter paisley uh because she wanted to reschedule for later that night but uh it looks like he's already got some plans for uh margaritas and hooking up in a hot tub so he just cancels it totally yep. um, yeah yeah so the the girls uh find the the box that was inside the package so when it was shaking and smoking earlier uh we didn't it was off screen it opened itself <laughs> um what's in they the didn't box? forget to shoot that scene <laughs> but yeah that's part <laughs> yeah, of the lore maybe. it's a self-opening package um but we we learned that inside is uh what they could only describe as an egyptian puzzle box and uh diana the new girl uh, on the team, she, uh, I think she says that like her brother had a, like a puzzle box like this and is able to figure out how to open it. Um, but as it opens, a big bright demon light comes out, uh, <laughs> flies around the room and you see it kind of vanish into Diana. When I was a kid, um, I was falling asleep in my crib and mom, mom hung a little big bright demon light above me. So that I <laughs> had something to look at while I fell asleep. Yeah. It felt good. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I like that yes. little effect. It was like the electric, oh, super like cool. the electric gremlin kind of. A hundred percent, like the electric gremlin. <laughs> it really looked like it. And that the the moment the box opened and made that like huge sound effect was actually really good comedic timing. Because I think th- there was like a line where she's like pushing in the last slide for the box to open. She's like, "I think this should open it," and then it just cuts her off, and you just hear "bong." Oh, I get it. Hey, this girl's a genius. No, my little brother had one of these boxes once. It was oriental. See, once these slats are in position, it should open. What the hell was that? I don't know. It felt like a hurricane. What about that sound? You ever hear anything like that in your life? (laughs) <laughs> it's great again very cartoony and also they're all dripping wet it's great yeah yeah um but you know that was a big like weird event um so they do like what everybody would do yes. after kind of having a very uncomfortable situation uh they decide to go order chinese food 
And uh, the Tess decides that she's just going to take a shower in her boss's office. Um, and that just gives that, that just starts the rotation of four <laughs> showers. Can I tell you what I would like? Nice hot shower. Can, wait, can we can we talk? There's a lot I want to unpack with this. Can we can we talk about this? Uh, this is to uh, do with our the podcast. first question. Why is she wearing her underwear while showering? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get there. Yeah, let's oh, okay, talk about sorry. that. She's. Clear- I can cut. Wait, I can yeah. cut that. We can start with your first question. No, no, she's clearly wearing like a thong in the shower, and yeah. I, I, was that like a matting thing? Were we not supposed to see that the bottom of the screen like that? Maybe she's a never nude. Oh, that could be. Oh, that's adorable. From the I don't. I don't down. think it was a matting thing. I think it was just a. The camera was just a little bit too far down, occasionally, because like you see the butts of everybody else, so it's not like they were trying to hide butts. Well, for the, for the same woman, you would see that like in one shot she'd be wearing a thong, and then in the next shot she would have like a bare ass, and they would go back and forth and back and forth. Huh? Like there would be a strap, and there would be no strap. Uh, strap, no strap. I didn't notice. Yeah. Um, you weren't looking that closely. <laughs> well, I'm I was studying every frame. I guess I was paying attention to the top half of the screen. <laughs> no, what, what I wanted to think about more thoroughly was there. There is <laughs> so this apartment or this apartment building. This skyscraper reminded me so much of the skyscraper from Gremlins Two, and then the CEO's office reminded me of Gremlins Two. But then Terrorgram, the sleazy porno producer in the first short film of Terrorgram, yeah, he has a shower in his executive office. Mm. I, don't, I was just getting like, there's something about '80s corporate high-rise executive office showers that feels like it's becoming a running theme. And also, I really want an office with a shower in it. Why do you need to shower next to your printer? I don't know, but I want to. That sounds awesome. It's also interesting that he had a shower, but he had a fridge full of, like, old rotten food. Yeah! <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that's the the kind of the disparity between those two things was interesting. Well, you can do it. He doesn't have to eat. He can just shower. <laughs> you need to- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you can just shower all day. Go into work. Take a shower. Go home. Can you got a bathe. shower? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's probably yeah, while his food is rotten. Old- yeah, if you eat an old rotten sandwich in the shower, it becomes good again. <laughs> Did anybody else notice the sound effects when they were washing their boobs? Was it like squeaky? No, <laughs> yeah, I didn't. no, yes, it was literally like squeaky, like like a like a bum washing a windshield at like a red like, light. Oh, it was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I didn't was, notice. Oh that. yeah, it was like a cartoon squeak. It's, it was fantastic. Every time they would rub their boobs, the uh, sound <laughs> effect would come in. <laughs> it was again. It was like thirteen-year-old, twelve-year-old boy humor. It was fantastic. Yeah, oh, that's um, and if you haven't noticed, uh, uh, you know, while you're listening here, uh, this movie's just sleazy. <laughs> so you'll get a lot of while they rub their boobs comments <laughs> probably for the rest of this. Maybe well, the movie maybe the out. Atmos uh, 4K mix. You'll hear <laughs> you'll hear the squeaking a little better when it bounces off yeah. your ceiling. You can yeah. hear the moldy food in the fridge on the other side of the shower. Yeah, I mean the this shower scene, like the one woman, it's. You know from the start what you're getting, because it's not like, well, I'm just going to hop in this shower. It's, we should all shower and get changed. And, oh, look, there's boxes of lingerie over there. That's perfect. <laughs> and yeah. and then, like, once the first person goes in, the next person's like, I'm in after you. And you know, yep. it, it does. It just turns into a montage of shower after shower. And shower two was Shane. Shane takes the shower. The, there's, the, there's the second shower. Honestly, but- the... I don't want to get into the ratings just yet, but like my old favorite movie was Paul Thomas Anderson's There Will Be Blood. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I think the shower sequence here really, really takes the cake from that opening sequence of him finding finding uh, gold. <sighs> <sighs> it's just a thing of beauty. Yeah. Um all right, so so Tess's shower is done, Shane hops in. As Dan mentioned, they find a box of lingerie that they decide to change into after each of them shower. Also, Gr- um, Greg obviously. is in heaven watching this twice, taking notes. <laughs> He's like, let me get all their names right so the audience here I can, act- uh, I l- actually went back who's... and changed some of my notes because I had their names wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, props, so, dude. I'm a, I'm a stickler that. for details. Let me get that. this research down. Uh, I should probably <laughs> do some frame-by-framing on this here. Yeah. I like to think his wife comes downstairs like three days later and he's watching it for the 12th time. He's like, it's for research. Get out. Yeah. It's, yeah. 
um all right so now uh it's now so dawn good. gets dawn gets a call from dr newton um and while they're on the call she gets cut off um as he's going to tell her about like what not to do with the box because he he was reading like some like occult spirit book i forget what, what it said on the on the oh, cover yeah. but it definitely looked like a coloring book yeah i wrote the title down oh it's called demonology and you uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, that sounds real. What is that, like, uh, occultic, a purpose-driven life? <laughs> Every morning, <laughs> repeat this satanic prayer. I'll read that book. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that sounds, sounds pretty good. Um, but yeah, so the, the phone line dies. Uh, uh, meanwhile, Tess, and, uh, Tess, who has done her shower and, and already changed into her, her lingerie, uh, her and Diana go down uh, to the basement to get more boxes. And Jackie... Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, Shane... No, I'm <laughs> get it right, man. Quick. Come on. Yeah, I'm trying. No, it is Jackie because uh, Shane's now done her shower, so Jackie now has her shower scene. <laughs> 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 so much. <laughs> uh, I, I like uh, how this yeah. has nothing to do with the plot whatsoever, but you're very careful about who's taking a shower when. Well, because because <laughs> some people are going back into the basement, and some people are still upstairs, and I need to make sure the people are where they're supposed okay. to be. Okay, you're right. All right, All right. Yeah. you're right. Yeah. Also, um, every once in a while, like one person, the first person like leaves the shower. I'm brilliant in the shower scene. First person leaves the shower and tells somebody else like, hey, you know, you're you're up next. But then the next person, like the second person is almost done showering when the third person <laughs> yeah. steps in already fully nude. Like, hey, it's my turn. Yeah. So they can <laughs> they be do a nude little together. Shower yeah. Swap. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah, be nude together for good. a moment. Yeah. God damn. Uh, hard right, to so die. Now... More like hard to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Hey. <laughs> um, sorry Eric I stole it from you, you no I like it I like it yeah. yeah keep it it's good uh, alright so now Tess and Diana are in the basement gathering boxes and this is where I can this This is the one character well outside of Orville that I relate to because Tess uh, ends up throwing her back out and she needs to sit down <laughs> to rest because she says she hurt her back in an accident I'm just overweight and I hurt myself sleeping um, <laughs> That's she, wait she said that <laughs> No, I do. Oh, she hurt herself in like a, a skiing, skiing accident. Act, yeah. <laughs> I was about to add, say, it sounds like you brought some yeah. you brought some personal shit to this movie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, well, you know, there could have been other <laughs> factors that would have led to your back hurting with that character. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get too far uh, into it, but you know, yeah, 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 because yeah. of her huge boots. The heels. <laughs> That's what he's oh, saying. yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely yeah. not the heels. You're right. Um, yep. Uh, all right. The, so she's sitting down. Uh, Tess walks away with a box, and we see. Um, I'm sorry, Diana <laughs> walked away. We, now we see uh, poor her b- back broken Tess. She's sitting there, and what happens? She gets her throat slit, and she's killed. Mm. And uh, we see like a bucket of blood just splatter on the wall, but we don't see anything. Like that was we a see lot her kind of get pulled. You know, we see it's a lot of blood. It's way more blood than should have come out. <laughs> but um, but we, we don't see her, like, get stabbed. We see her get, like, pulled backwards yeah. and then see the blood. So we don't see her die, but it is very much implied she died with a bucket of dark blood. So Mystery killer. I mean, the splatter of blood is cartoonishly large. Like <laughs> yeah, I I and it, and it yeah. looks like it's blatantly thrown just from a bucket. Yeah, Th- this is <laughs> like weird. It really does. Yeah. The, the first the first thing that I thought when I saw that was you know those like uh, videos of like Rube Goldberg machines where somebody builds this huge contraption that has twenty steps and at the end it like breaks an egg or something dumb like that. Yeah, like I felt like that bucket of blood splatter was the result of like a thirty minute long <laughs> Rube Goldberg machine and they were just excited that it was done and they didn't reshoot it. Yeah, because it was it was a cartoonishly <laughs> large splash of blood. He it was, was like a, cut, outstanding. Cut print. It's beautiful. Done. Finished. I love the splat sound. Move. That's all we need. Next scene. <laughs> you, More showering. Some, <laughs> Get back to the showers. Squeeze some boob squeeze sounds too, please. <laughs> while we're at it. Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody uh, uh, foley those bad boys? Thanks. <laughs> uh, all right. So Tess is dead. We've got Diana coming back up from the basement. And uh, Shane is on her way down to wait for the Chinese food to get delivered. Um, now we got Dawn shower scene, which is the last, I believe, of the gratuitous nudity in the movie. Uh, um, but rest assured, it's, hey, you know what? It's okay. 
they're all in lingerie for the rest of the movie. <laughs> yep, <laughs> like pretty pretty skimpy lingerie hey, you, uh, do, for the do, whole movie. I, I'm you know, but I'm going to go on record saying that I'm not a woman, but but huh. I can say this for sure. Were I in a pair of cutoff jeans and a crop top, and those things got wet, a far more comfortable thing to wear while doing manual labor is a high rise thong. And a teddy that's made out of lace, like, rubbing against my nipples. For sure, 100%, that's the right thing to do. And I would do it, checks, too. Yeah, that checks out. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm here for it. Cardboard and Lace. That's the, that's the name of this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so uh, cutting from Dawn's shower scene, um, unfortunately. Uh, then we then cut back to Shane, who's down in the lobby. Uh, she hears something going on, and she, uh, as well gets murdered uh we, again we don't see much uh, this isn't that gory of a movie uh but it is <laughs> weirdly excessive violent <laughs> with very little gore <laughs> like yeah. this um, this kill the the killer has like a hook like a, the shadow yeah. is like a hook and that's also happens in slumber party so i mean i'm massacre. sorry sorority house massacre <laughs> 2 uh the same exact shadow on the wall like you're like it's yeah. like the classic hook killer like you talk about around a campfire but it doesn't come into play at all yeah 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 uh i think that's the last time we see the hook yeah yeah it's just a quick um, probably exactly for that reason right just like a quick callback gag and yep. then that was it mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. probably um so after uh after um <laughs> who was it shane shane gets murdered uh the chinese delivery woman finally shows up and she walks in and there's a note on the elevator that says come up to the uh, 11th floor uh, she wa- goes up there. She walks into an office, and she's standing in like a a, a big puddle of something, and that turns out to be uh, gasoline. Mm. And so she gets set on fire and is killed. Um, Anybody so poor... have an issue with her outfit? Um, I had a lot of issues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the outfit was weird. I, I to begin with. I think the outfit was to. Um hide the fact that the stunt person was going to get lit on fire. Um, yeah, that so, was what I thought too. Yeah, it was. so it was the chow down delivery service, which I love. And she was wearing an old lady nightgown with a winter hat. And then <laughs> underneath, she was wearing like a full, like a, like a shirt buttoned all the way up and pants. Um, and I think it was because they, they were going to light her ass on fire. So they needed to like bundle her up with a bunch of stuff. But yeah. She's wearing more clothes than the janitor. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> also, just... when she's when she's fully en- engulfed in flames, she like spins around in front of the camera, and you can see that they just blurred the face. Of yeah, the, the you're right. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's just shocking because we went from lingerie to a nightgown with a winter <laughs> hat. That's the most scary thing of this movie. And it does have like her whole outfit does kind of have like trash. It it looks like a trash bag kind of. Yeah, it, like it all yeah, looks plastic. Yeah. I know it's supposed to look like a nightgown, but it looks like it's made out of plastic. Mm. And was was she doing like a bad racist Asian accent? Kind of. Oh, oh I don't remember. Maybe I didn't catch that. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It just seemed really weird and off. Like I, I'm pretty sure it was just definitely a white woman. Oh yeah, it was a white lady. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, hey, right, the, so the, the, the fact that you asked that as a question is probably a point in this movie's favor because in the 90s they could have gone full on racist and uh, yeah, nobody would have had an yeah. eye yeah because that I, shit I guess, sucked I, back I guess then. saying like were they trying to be racist <laughs> yeah. or funny? i don't know oh how refreshing uh, to ask the question <laughs> yeah um but our poor chow down chinese delivery uh woman is dead for no reason besides trying to drop off some delicious chinese food we, we ordered d- it double fried <laughs> <laughs> We do get yeah, we do get a good a good line from one of the the ladies upstairs. She's like, "Where's the food? It's going to be char broiled by the time it gets here." So, uh, <laughs> oh, I like missed that. that. Yeah. Oh, like that's that. great. Uh, the comedy in this is mwah, God gold. Damn. You know, every uh, time I hear a line like that in a movie, I know that the writer like sat back in their chair, like cracked their knuckles, pat themselves on the back. Oh, that's totally. A, yeah, that's a good works. line. Yeah, it's a goodie. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I'd be proud. Me too. Um, I'm not even lying. I'd be super proud of myself if I read this movie. Uh, So now we cut back to Dr. Newton's office. Uh, He's meeting with two detectives. Uh, He he basically called them because, like, uh, he was on the phone call with Dawn earlier and the line got cut off and he thinks something has happened. 
which he's right, but um, how, why he would think that? But same detectives two, from Slumber Party Massacre. Yeah, the two cops. Uh, I don't know their names, and I don't want to look. Doesn't it up. matter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a male detective and a female detective. Uh, but yeah, they were the cops at the end of Sorority House Massacre who arrested Orville for murder, uh, but he got away. So the male detective still like thinks that um, Orville is is guilty, and he's well aware that Orville works at that building. Um, and Newton, uh, Dr. Newton also comments on how he, that he knew Clive Hockstetter, uh, the killer from Slumber Party Massacre and also the killer ghost from Slumber, uh, Sorority House Massacre too. And, um, <laughs> we will never get that right. Oh, what a that, mess. That, yeah. So he, he knew Hockstetter, uh, when Hockstetter was alive and he thinks how you jump to this conclusion. He thinks that, uh, Clive Hawksetter might have created a soul box mm. and that his spirit could have gotten out and taken over one of the girls. Or we'll catch him. I'm positive that scum killed five girls at the old Hawksetter place, but I could never prove it. Hawksetter? Clive Hawksetter? Yeah. I've been chasing catch him ever since. You know, I knew Hawksetter when he was alive. What? My God. God, if that man has managed to create one of those boxes... What boxes? What the hell are you talking about? A soul box, Mike. A legendary soul box. You can't be serious. Deadly serious, Miss Shawley. And if one of those boxes is ever opened again, the evil spirit can escape into the world and inhabit anybody it pleases. But the box was actually meant to be delivered to him. Exposition, so, baby. We needed it. So, Hockstetter was looking to possess a old man <laughs> a professor <laughs> yeah. i don't know what that would have done for him he went from being an old like an older man to a, a more older man i don't know if that helps it's, but like, it's like freaky, he, he freaky old... friday he, sw I... he switched bodies if he's already dead <laughs> well, really what yeah, it is well he i know he needed a body but like why not like wouldn't it be better to be in like a young like female body like couldn't you you can do more. Like his assuming... body works better. It'd be funny if he like possessed her earlier, and it was just her taking a shower, but it was Hotstetter's voice the whole time. <laughs> like that's right. Yeah, get in there. Yeah. Well, Diana's the only one that we don't see showering. I think. Don't pretend like you don't know. No, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I think. I, I think I'm right. You, we do. We do see her topless when she's introduced in the movie. Like that's the first shot of her you get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think she showers. She. I think. Well, she goes to shower, but I don't think we see it. But regardless, I'm, can we keep talking about the shower scene? <laughs> the shower scenes are good. <laughs> no, I. I mean, I think you know, if I was a ghost and I had to possess somebody, would I? rather possess a young person who's currently working night shifts between jobs restocking shelves in a lingerie store or mm. possess like an older guy that's getting close to retirement and probably has like tenureship and like publishing rights to shit i think i'd probably take the older guy too i take the young woman i don't know well you know i don't know i guess different strokes for different ghosts let us know <laughs> Uh, go on up to your podcast app and rate us five stars and five let stars, us know please. if you would rather possess an old m museum professor. A, a tenured uh, professor. A, a tenured, assumedly, like, published professor. Who's reading demonology in you. Hell yeah. yeah but he, he's an old man. Yes. Or would you rather possess a young, uh, attractive female who m maybe doesn't have as much... Like mid money or skills or whatever. Mid twenties and doesn't have a old career man, yet. young woman, but knows her you way around. Five a... stars though. You're not allowed to vote <laughs> <laughs> otherwise. But Sorry, she Eric, what was that? But she knows her way around a submachine gun. True. Oh, yeah. Well, I yeah. Well, we'll rifle, get to that. But yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the same. Yeah, it's a gun. You're right. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna shut the fuck up. <laughs> um. All right. So now we have uh, Dawn, uh, Diana, and Jackie. Uh, go down to the basement looking for the girls. Uh, they end up finding their bodies, uh, the bodies of Tess and Shane, shoved into a box. And there's a lot, a lot of blood on the ground. Uh, they run off screaming. Uh, they they <laughs> try to they try to run away, but they see Orville kind of blocking the front door. Um, so uh, they they escape into the elevator, 
And uh, as they're going up in the elevator, the delivery woman's body falls through the ceiling of it. Yeah. And she is looking worse for wear. <laughs> uh, they end up barricading themselves in an office, which um, awesomely has a Death Stalker 2 poster on the wall. Nice. <laughs> if anybody noticed that. No, yes. I didn't. Oh, um, wow. I should have watched it twice. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a, another Jim Wynorski movie. Uh, Dawn leaves to go get uh, their boss's gun. She uh, believes he has a gun in his office. Uh, so now we get her kind of walking around a little bit. Did, did, um, did, did we talk about the scene where they barricade themselves inside the office? Well, yeah, I just skipped over a lot, but you can well, they, hop in there. They're, so they're, what is it? Three or four women are barricaded three. inside. Three women end up inside that office in, in the executive suite, and they move a filing cabinet in front of the doors to like barricade themselves inside inside but there's two doors that open out and they wedge the filing cabinet in front of one of the two doors <laughs> which effectively wouldn't stop anything nice. so i just want to point that out also if two 90 pound ladies can move a filing cabinet that shit's not going to stop a supernatural entity that wants to stab them to death. I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying. Well, so so they think it's Orville who's trying uh, uh, is doing the killing. Well, he better yet than even more finite boy. terms. Yes, yeah, he, he could boy. lean he's on that boy. door and knock that cabinet over. So yeah, he could just he could just eat it like a raw meat sandwich. <laughs> that filing cabinet is for appearances only. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. So she she goes on the hunt for her boss's gun. Uh, she gets up to the office of Acme Lingerie. And uh, as she's she finds it, uh, Orville uh, has now entered the lingerie office. Um, dun, she dun, dun. <laughs> she stands up, yells something at him, and she tries to shoot him, but the gun doesn't have any bullets. And this is my favorite part of the movie. Well, one of my favorite parts of the movie because she doesn't have any bullets. She just throws the gun at him, and it hits him in the chest, and it does nothing. <laughs> but she grabs a letter opener and she starts stabbing him repeatedly oh yeah like in the stomach and chest um at this he, he, I, can i say when i was so i have not seen this movie before this is my first time watching it i i fell in love with the janitor from scene one as the second i saw him i knew he was my <laughs> son and i loved him forever and he could do no wrong and then as the movie goes along they uh, clearly the filmmakers want you to think that he's the bad guy and they keep making him imposing and make people like scared of him. And he's saying like kind of self-incriminating things or leading you to think he's the bad guy. But I knew I had love in my heart and hope in my chest. And I, I wanted him to be better than the killer. And at this yes. moment, I was telling myself like, he's not the killer though, right? He can't be the killer. He's too great. And she's stabbing him to death. And I felt so bad for him. I sincerely felt something for him. Yep. I felt so bad for him. And then later on, well, I don't, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but... Ah, oh, this poor boy, he gets done wrong. He, he gets done dirty. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you should be able to assume he's not the killer because, like, we've seen a bright ghost light monster, so... Yeah. Um, well, I mean, these movies, you never really... I mean, the shower could have turned out to be the killer. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> well, that's true. That's what happens in Witch Trap. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck knows? Hey, there's another, th another connection to old movies. Witch Trap, surprise shower sequence when they should be doing labor. That uh, also I happens in that movie. I also want to mention the the flashing lightning that's consistent throughout this oh movie, which is very reminiscent of mausoleum, like lightning happening inside of rooms when it should be outside. Um, they'll have like outside building shots with lightning, but they'll also just like flash it up constantly throughout this movie. Yeah. It is a character in and of itself. It is constant. Yeah. I just wanted to call that car that carries over from Sorority House Massacre too. Yeah, lightning yeah. flashes inside the fucking elevator. Lightning <laughs> flashes in hallways between rooms where there are no windows. Like yeah. lightning is just, yeah, the lights are faulty in this building. <laughs> A lot of times um the building and the um the lightning flashes uh reminded me of I think it was Poltergeist 3. Mm. Um where yeah, it, it like the cover? Yeah, cover of Poltergeist 3. It's got a big like high rise building with a bunch of lightning around mm. it. Um, yeah, just wanted to nice. uh, uh, I mean, make sure I was right while I said it. Yeah, you, you say Poltergeist three. I say the the last Star Wars movie when the Emperor is revealed and his throne room it just has strobe lights in it for no reason <laughs> gave me a seizure in the theater. Yeah, there that's what go. I was yeah. thinking about. You man, Palpatine you know. would have been awesome in this movie. Could you imagine? 
if the the, the if five had, girls go into the basement had, and just yeah. if he had boobs and he was showering <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> my power is complete <laughs> 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 Yeah, would have made for a uh, more interesting version of uh, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Not this it's movie. It's your movie's turn perfect. in the shower. And he does the lightning bolt fingers to point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they come out like as our, nipples. Like our favorite from the Majorettes. I'm just going <laughs> to keep bringing up all the old movies we talked about. Uh, Go back and review our catalog. We have a lot of movies God damn, about. I, I miss exploitation. This is fun. I really miss these movies. What a good yeah, pick. Yeah, they're pretty great. Yeah, that's a good pick. Um... All right, so we'll 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 move on. We're actually getting pretty close to the end. Like a lot of it's just repetition from here, but um, yeah. So so she has stabbed Orville many many times. Uh, he falls to the ground, but as Dawn starts walking by, he grabs her leg, and then she ends up strangling him with something. I couldn't tell what the it telephone was. Telephone cord. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. that makes sense. Uh, so she strangles him with a telephone cord, and he goes down again. Dawn runs off, but uh, she's hurt now. Like her her leg is hurt from. Uh, poor sweet cuddly bear Orville oh, grabbing her. Orville, so. come on, my sweet boy. This is the first of twenty <laughs> times that Orville dies in this movie. Yeah, and some are unbelievable. <laughs> some, I, I think, that him being stabbed in the stomach like eight times, and then, oh, that, oh yeah, yeah, that should have done okay, it. Okay, all of them, yeah. all of them are unbelievable. Okay. Gets his head smashed in. It just... Yeah, well, we'll yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, get, <laughs> we'll get to them all. It's continuous. <laughs> my boy Or yeah. Orville is a vessel of love for this world and this this movie just like christ himself he takes on the sins of the world yes he, he yep. just absorbs all the pain and suffering and it's all for all for good orville, hey, orville good. falls yeah. three times <laughs> <laughs> i will never deny him before the crow calls i'm here for you orville we love you the stations um, of orville <laughs> It's just the, you have to make it. You cross yourself, but it's the shape of a meat sandwich. Yeah, it's it's the stations of the slob, <laughs> the body of Orville, and you just get a piece of raw meat. You're like, oh, really? I gotta suck on this for oh. while kneeling. This is horrible. Eat this meat, for it is the cheapest of the cuts. <laughs> it's oh, literally man. the blood of Orville. <laughs> Uh, Drink this yeah, high Orville. life. It is the champagne of beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Orville's going to have a rough time the rest of this movie. So, yeah. <laughs> be a, if, listen, if you're an Orville stan, as we are, <laughs> um, just be aware you're going to you're going to have a rough go, as as does Orville. Oh boy. Um, all right. So now we cut back to Diana and Jackie, who are uh, barricaded in their bo- uh, in their like meeting room. Uh, Diana leaves uh, Jackie to go find Dawn, and Dawn is trying to make her way back to the uh, barricaded office, but she runs into Orville again because he's not dead again. <laughs> yeah, uh, she she <laughs> not only is he not dead, in- he's been stabbed a shit ton, strangled, and implied that she broke his neck. Like there was a loud yeah. crack when she was strangling him, and then he like goes limp. But then yeah. the next time she sees him, he's fully erect in it. Well, I shouldn't say fully erect. In <laughs> well, whoa, whoa, whoa. He might be <laughs> yeah. in an elevator waiting. Like not only did he get up and walk, but he snuck and quickly and like hid and sprung a trap. Yeah. Uh, our boy Orville. He has like one line in this movie. Is that what we're getting to, Greg? His, his... No, he, he's talked earlier. Oh, he told the story about how. Oh, he shit. You're right. You're right. Story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he doesn't talk much. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, not a lot of red yeah, text in this Bible. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dawn runs into Orville again. She ends up kneeing him in the crotch, so I hope he wasn't erect, Dan. That would be bad. <laughs> um, no, she then slams yeah. his head into a desk and, uh, desk and stabs him in the neck um, with something. That'll I definitely kill Another letter right? opener. That'll definitely do she, it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, probably. So she runs away because Orville is definitely dead. I just want to track. So, so far, Orville has like eight puncture wounds in his stomach, a broken and strangled neck. So I guess collapsed windpipe. He has a fracture in his skull from being smashed into the desk, and now he's a stab wound in his neck. Carry on. Yeah, and a, and a broken ding dong. And a broken, <laughs> yeah, and and one one ruptured testicle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Dawn runs away to the elevator. <laughs> broken. Um, we then see Diana walking around looking for Dawn, and uh, as she's calling out for Dawn, her voice changes. Mm. Kind of hear a different voice coming out of old Diana. Dawn. Are you here? Uh, Dawn gets back to the safe room with Jackie. 
Uh, Diana is still walking around the office building, but Orville finds her, and we get a pretty short but brutal uh, battle. Uh, so Orville is, again, not dead, and <laughs> he, he says to Diana, I'll get you no matter whose body you're in. Yeah. And uh, they, they fight some, and he ends up snapping Diana's neck and throws her body down the elevator shaft. <laughs> yep. Done. So Orville He's a man now. finally wins a match. Yep. Um, now we got Jackie and Dawn. Uh, they're, they're talking in the barricaded up room, and they decide to make a break for it, but immediately they separate, <laughs> which was... I know... I, I, was she... Was, so this is how it works out. I think Dawn was supposed to go to the front door. Jackie was supposed to go to the roof. For some reason, you can't get off the roof. Um, and if they ran into Orville, they'd scream, and the other person would just keep going, knowing that like he probably wasn't near them. Mm, okay. So one of them could get away. Yeah. Um, but we, we then cut to uh, another scene with Orville stapling galls to his stomach. <laughs> cool. I like I like that he was stapling it to his shirt. Like he's got yes. he's got a t shirt on, a flannel shirt, and he's stapling it to the outermost layer instead of like to his skin. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, the gauze on the outside of a flannel. That's so fucking hideous. That's so disgusting. <laughs> uh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So then we we, we cut the Jackie kind of walking around the building. And uh, she's uh, she's confronted by Orville, and she ends up beating him up and throws him down the stairs. He is not a good fighter. <laughs> he's a he's a lover, not a fighter. I guess. Well, she knees him in the nuts too. So that's just he's got to start covering himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Jackie ends up on the roof, and he ends up following her uh, as he's kind of slowly. You know, uh, th- with the pace of a man who's <laughs> been stabbed a dozen times and ha- many other problems, he's he's walking towards Jackie. But Dawn gets up there, grabs a trash can lid, <laughs> and uh, knocks Orville off the roof of the building. Oh yeah, which we've we've learned there is at least eleven stories yeah. to this building, mm-hmm. if not more. Um, so he has now fallen off the roof. His body hits the ground. They comment on seeing his body. The whole camera um, shakes. They look... The whole building shakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, hear, yeah. like... you hear a big thud, and yeah, the yeah. camera it's shakes. It's great. It's well-timed. Um, it's, it's an awesome, like, comedy hit. Yeah. Uh, but his... Uh, yeah, they, they talk... The two girls talk a little bit, and they look down back at his body, and his body is gone almost immediately. <laughs> he is a quick-to-recover boy. Um, Dawn and Jackie then... Start going through to more like office buildings, and they end up at a gun store. Yeah, you a... know, and the yeah, okay. you know that that the four that one story of every skyscraper that's just got assault Guns. assault rifle. Actually, I I shouldn't have said anything about submachine guns or assault rifles because there were MP5s on the wall. There were some there were submachine guns and there were assault rifles, and they were all loaded. All of them were fully loaded. Ammo in the clip. Um. All right, so Orville shows up to the gun store. The girls have uh, got their guns all ready. Dawn mentions that she knows how to use them because her dad was a Marine, so she could probably figure it out. Uh, They unload several clips or magazines or whatever guns have have... into... Well, they they unload towards They have one magazine that has 10,000 bullets inside of it. Uh, Yeah, it never never gets changed. Yeah. Yeah. And... Yes. Yeah. So another reason this is a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. The the gun is a um, noise maker yeah. that goes burr when you pull the trigger. Yeah, <laughs> That's like, essentially what happens. It's like GI GI Joe and Cobra shooting at each other <laughs> yeah. just continuously. From across the room, barely hiding behind cover, like 10 feet away from each other, just both yeah, of just... them. <laughs> well, that, that's just uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So or- Orville, he takes at minimum probably a dozen shots. Probably more than that because the gun shoots for about four and a half minutes. <laughs> um, but it does look like she misses a lot. And it's from um, an AK-47. At- so these aren't tiny bullets. These are big fucking bullets that would tear your limbs off. Yeah. Yeah, it's big fucking bullets, but not for a big fucking That's boy true. like Gorville. That's true. <laughs> you do get a hottie in lingerie shooting guns for, for quite some time. Is that a thing? You know. That's a thing, isn't oh, yeah. it? Oh, that's definitely a thing. Bikini yeah. babes. You bullets. ask if you ask as if it's not your it's, thing. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, so Jackie Brown. It's a Jackie Brown. It's a thing. Oh, that's right. The DVD they watch at the apartment. You're right. Yeah, 
Shit. It would have been, Greg, it would have been exactly my thing if they were nuns. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Touche. You got me there. Same. Um, I'll double down I, on that. Eric, Eric, you don't have to say same. It was understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if this podcast has taught anybody anything, it's... I have a nun. We got a nun. We got a nun lover right here <laughs> on this show. We will have none of that. <laughs> oh, we got to do a nun movie soon. All right. Uh, so Orville has been shot a lot, and he is back on the ground. Uh, Diana shows up. She comes out of the elevator, starts demanding the gun in her new monster voice. Give me the gun. And, uh, yeah, and uh, Diana is standing by uh, Orville. She takes the gun from uh, Dawn, I think uh, hits Dawn in the face with the gun, or it hits Jack. She hits them both, I think. Both girls get hit by Diana. And uh, Diana starts shooting at Dawn. Um, Jackie, unfortunately, gets shot in the crossfire, and she is killed. Uh, one or two bullets will put down Jackie. <laughs> best best um, kill ever. Her her fall was fantastic. I loved it. Me yeah, too. It was, it was pretty good. Very dramatic. Um, so now I think we can refer to her as Possessed Diana, because she obviously is possessed by the, the, the bright light demon monster. Um, uh, possessed Diana gets shot a whole lot and she ends up going down um, their boss uh, Brad Plimpton shows up and basically it's just like uh, yeah like y- I definitely think you killed everyone because your gun is still smoking and everyone else is dead um, and I-, I thought that scene was pretty funny but uh, Diana ends up getting up and shooting him so now he's <laughs> back in the movie and also dead uh, from there, we get uh, more more of a gunfight between uh, Diana and uh, and Dawn, and we we finally catch up to the opening scene of the movie where she's saying, "I can't believe this is happening," or or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Orville now joins Dawn in the fight against uh, Diana. They they end up shooting each other to the point that they and uh, they shoot each other a lot for like for like but a they minute. Seemingly, they yeah, unload fully <laughs> automatic gunfire again. Not behind cover or whatever just standing there 10 feet away just machine gunning oh, yeah. at each other it's great yeah, yeah. Uh, but they, they do seemingly end up killing each other leaving Dawn as our final girl of hard to die but don't worry there's about 10 minutes left in this movie <sighs> uh, <laughs> not my final son though yeah carry on <laughs> Uh, so the the uh, we we cut to the morning, I believe, when the detectives finally show up. Even though the doctor told them to get there, God knows how long ago. The uh, the detectives show up, and they find Dawn cuddled up to Old Orville, just laying laying against him, taking a nap. Uh, she tells them that Orville saved her life, but the male cop uh, isn't buying it, thinking that she's in shock. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Uh, while they're, while the detectives and Dawn are talking, Diana wakes up from her, uh, just her small dun, death. Dun, like dun. she died a little bit, maybe. <laughs> she wakes up and shoots at the, de- the detectives. The male detective gets like shot in the leg or the arm or something. Well, um, she, she died and, a little uh, bit. She's possessed by a spirit. So she could be dead. Like it could be that just the human vessel is dead, but the, the demon that's like, possessing and- the body is animating the corpse. Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, that leads to more questions for the movie. Which, so. for her, makes sense. <laughs> Orville, at this point, yes. should be very dead, because he's a he's a real boy. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, 100% okay. right, uh, because Orville, uh, he's back, baby. <laughs> and he and uh, <laughs> uh, Diana, once again, are shooting at each other until they uh, seemingly die again. Um, now, th- now, this happens. Um, this happens down in the, like, at, like, right by the exit yeah. of the lobby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Dawn had made it downstairs. Diana chased her. Orville came down. And <laughs> like that, he just yells out, like, Hawkstatter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. And then they shoot each other again for about four minutes. <laughs> and they both go That's down. It's another Hilarious. kind of shower scene, really, if you think about it. That's great. Hawkstatter! <laughs> so long, neighbor. Um, but yeah, so Dawn is finally safe, and uh, we we cut to seeing 
uh, some like paramedics. They've got them on uh, their own individual gurneys or stretchers. And uh, she and Orville are taken out. And as they're being taken out, they uh, Dawn reaches her hand out and Orville reaches his out and they start holding hands. And then like a heart, <laughs> sh- like uh, it, it's kind of like yeah. a fade in of a heart over their hands. And it says, instead of the end, it says the beginning. Because oh. <laughs> now they're in love. There's like wedding bell, um, wedding bell music. Yeah, and, there's like the yeah. wedding song. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, we, we cut to the end credits. And uh, if you stay for the whole time, you'll see um a a dream movie that never got made uh, it says orville will return in orville in orbit yeah and that movie sounds amazing i, want it. I wish it got made oh, i want it too i want it so bad yeah there's there's also uh, a uh text that says personal training for orville ketchum provided by hard bodies for you which i like, <laughs> to, think, nice. like to see him just like exercising like on the dvd extras you know like how the marvel guys get all buff He's just, just horrible eating raw sandwiches. <laughs> He's got one sandwich in his hand, just lifting one after the other to his mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a hardcore workout. Do you guys want to hear the, the the list of injuries Orville took in this movie? Yes. So Orville, Orville, in in my note taking, he could have taken more. This is not a this might not be a conclusive list, but this is all the things that I took note of. Uh, Orville takes eight stabs to the stomach. He has a broken neck and a collapsed trachea. Um, he suffers a uh, ruptured testicle, uh, testicle, a cracked skull, a stab neck, a second ruptured testicle, a fall down a flight <laughs> of stairs. He gets a concussion from a trash can lid. He falls 11 stories onto the ground. He takes minimum. Minimum. He <laughs> takes 20 plus bullets from an AK-47. He takes a rifle butt to the head, and then he takes 20 more bullets from an AK-47. Yes. <laughs> and this motherfucker <laughs> lives to the end. Orville. Orville. Yeah. He, he lives and falls in love. Yay. He's our boy. He's the best. Good, I, Good for him. I love that there's no explanation of how he can be. <laughs> no. Like just, they just roll with it. It's the best. Oh, he's, he's, I could have done. I could have watched 20 more movies with him just taking a beating, and it would have been fantastic what was the uh what was that whole series of like 90s movies somebody goes to space somebody goes to prison what was that one called oh like hellraiser or something no or, no no or, J- like, or jace or the jason stuff it was like, like a kid's a... kid show uh, Ernest. oh Ernest. Uh, I, yeah. I want like an <laughs> Ernest style uh, he goes to camp he goes to yeah. prison he saves christmas he's scared stupid he goes to jail he, goes to africa I, I want an Ernest style universe but with orville and they're all horror movies Oh, I want that so bad. I oh, mean, yeah. he's still alive. He could still do it. <sighs> I want it. So, not to spoil anything, but his name is not actually Orville Ketchum. It's actually <laughs> yeah, which is weird. It's actually an actor. His name is Peter Spellos. <gasps> Peter Spellos, you're my spirit animal, and I love you. And I hope you're listening to this right now. He does a lot of voice voice acting for video games and anime. A lot of anime. Like Ghost in the Shell, yeah. like like well known at Transformers stuff like that. Dude, I hope my boy's getting work. That's awesome. I want to get a beer with him. <laughs> All uh, right. I hope my boy is getting work. Well, <laughs> unlike Orville, do you guys want to stab this movie to death? Yeah, let's stab it. Time for the ratings. So here on Stabby Stabby, we rate our movies uh, zero to ten stabs. Uh, zero being uh, you ha- you had just watched a cutscene from a video game, which is not a movie. It is art, but it's not a movie. Um, and ten being uh, you you couldn't imagine your world and your life without this movie being a part of it. And as always, we do stab affectionately. So ten is the best. Um, how about we start? I'm going to start with Dan. It's me. Uh, how many stabs are you given? <sighs> Hard to die. I forgot what it was called. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it does have like four names. Yeah. So. <laughs> Which franchise are we talking about? Um, so I, I, I will, I'm going to start with this hedge. If I was rating Orville, this would be a 10 out of 10. If I was rating Orville. Yeah. I'm yes. rating this movie. We're going to rate this movie. I'm going to give this six and a half out of 10. I enjoyed this movie. It was really fun. I really, I don't, I didn't realize how much I really missed sitting and actually watching a sexploitation movie they're so much fun they're such like i treasure these movies they're they're great little windows into the people who make them and 
like the kinds of audiences that they think exist for these films and like what they think other people want to see. Like, I just think all that stuff is so fascinating. And this movie spares no expense. It's, it's wonderful. Um, the kills are boring. The set is kind of bad. The lightning strobes start to hurt my eyes after a while. Um, the story's kind of non-existent and a little sloppy, and I was a little confused as to, like, character motivations and stuff like that for most of it. Um, having said all that, it's pretty well shot. Like, the lighting is pretty good. There's a couple of sequences. Like, I'm, uh, Orville's big monologue at the start of the movie when he tells the story of the previous film. Like, the lights in the room go dim, and there's, like, a spotlight on his face while he's telling the story. Like, there's some, like, little touches like that that I really like. Um, it also features the single ugliest elevator set I think I've ever seen in my entire goddamn <laughs> life. It's a hideous elevator. Uh, but I had a blast watching it. It's got a 12-minute long shower sequence, and it just gets better and better as it goes along. And I enjoyed that. The music was terrible, but in the best possible way. Yeah, six and a half out of ten. Six and a half out of ten. If you are in the mood for a sleazy-ass, diehard ripoff slasher with the most adorable button face teddy bear of a protagonist i highly recommend hard to die <laughs> six and a half out of ten uh greg how are you feeling about this well for me um if if you looked up movies for greg in the dictionary <laughs> there would be this would be one of the pictures i'm gonna go ahead and give this an eight and a half <laughs> oh nice um nice. Awesome. i i this this is the kind of movie i enjoy it's dumb it's dumber and <laughs> it's it's just it's fun and it's trying to it's not trying to tell you that much of a story um it's to the point that it's referencing a movie that it's not part of that franchise <laughs> so um uh yeah it's it's really really good uh the 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 girls in it are fantastic both in and out of the shower i i like all of them uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah and uh or orville catch him um he he will live in my dreams and uh if you watch this he will live in yours as well uh so the, the big big recommendation and eight and a half uh stabs from me uh for every reason you could think of um it, uh, one, one of the best movies ever so uh, <laughs> yeah uh how about you eric this uh, i'd like to hear uh, how many stabs you'd give this uh well i thought i went too high but you beat me you beat me at eight and a <laughs> half i i went an eight nice. um i had a lot of fun yeah i had lots lots of fun so uh, uh i like the showering and the lingerie of course um <laughs> there's a little bit too much lightning and box moving for my taste um but i did like that it knew it was low budget um, it knew it was trashy and it just played up to that fact. So I, I just think it's like exploitation at its best. It's just fun. Orville Ketchum is amazing and should have just replaced all the Marvel superhero movies <laughs> as his own character and just wiped all of them out. And he should have been the Marvel franchise. Uh, he's indestructible. He barely speaks. He eats sandwich, nasty sandwiches. Uh, he just leers at everyone. He keeps keys in his pants but he has he has a heart of gold uh and i would have loved to see that space movie i would have been all in but yeah it's fun it's really fun um number two um is fun too but i think this this outdoes it with his um them just beating the shit out of him it just gets so comedic and cartoony that it's it's fantastic so lots of fun thanks greg glad to revisit this one yeah. i forgot i even watched it until Popped it back on. Great it's, pick. It's awesome. Really great pick. Yeah, so so if you're interested in watching it, I would recommend uh, going over to VHSPS.com and maybe ordering it for yourself because uh, there is really no other way to get it. Um, so Do it. It's worth uh, it. I go, think, what is it, like 10 yeah. bucks to get the DVD shipped to you? And, I think and so. the thing that I love yeah. about VHSPS, not that we're going to turn this into an ad for VHSPS, <laughs> but the, the <laughs> thing that I love about it is a VHSPS rip of for these movies is different from like a blue, a Blu-ray restoration or whatever, where the like grit carries over and a movie well, like it's, this, it's just a straight VHS. And even rip. then, the, sometimes like, the VHS yeah. is a rip of like a shitty, like old projection reel. Like it, the, the degradation is deep and meta. And sometimes like a movie like this, I kind of enjoy that kind of grit. It, it like adds to the overall vibe and I like it. 
So for 10 bucks, like, hell yeah, hit them up. Go to VHSBS, order this movie. It's worth it. Get this, get Blood Harvest, and get, uh, what's another movie that feels really good when it's gritty? Radioactive Dreams. Yeah! <laughs> Invisible no. Maniac. I no, 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 actually, too, so. ma- maybe not Radioactive Dreams, because if I remember right, they only have the edited version on VHSBS. They don't have the uncut version. They, I think you have to get the Blu-ray to get the uncut version. Uh, well, there's no Blu-ray of it, so. Oh, shit. All right, yeah. well, VHS. I think you're thinking yes, of a different movie. <laughs> I, I love that they have the trailers beforehand as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you get yeah. to discover other movies that may be in the same vein or genre. What was the movie before this that I said? Uh, it watch? was a <laughs> sex comedy called The Turn On. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's so that right. sounds uh, pretty good, too. All right. Um, Thanks for turning us on to that, VHSBS. Hey, uh, if if I wanted to be turned on to whatever movie we're going to watch next, how would I do that, Greg? Look, if you're looking to be turned on, this is what <laughs> I would recommend. <laughs> Turn on come a on. shower, quick. <laughs> <laughs> come on come on over to Instagram. Go go to go to at Stabby Pod. Give it a follow. See how it feels. See if that rests on your body well enough. <laughs> It's going to feel good, I guarantee you. Um, no, but follow us on Stabby Pod on Instagram. We uh, announce uh, the next movie we're going to be watching every Wednesday uh, with new episodes coming out every Monday. So you'll have a few days uh, and the weekend to drink a bunch of beers, pop on some sleeves, and I hope it's late at night because these movies go down ah, real good around 1 a.m. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so so follow us there. Uh, rate us on your podcast app. Uh, I don't know any of them besides Apple, how to do it. So you just pop five stars in there. Uh, I don't stars. think it works if you don't put five stars. So you might as well just put five stars anyway. All five stars. Yeah. And, a, ri- uh, a written yeah, review us, uh, will, written review helps too. Please uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so in yeah. your review, let us know, you know, let us know if you like what you're watching. Uh, you, even if you give five stars and you hate the show, just be like, Hey, five star, I give you five stars to help. Uh, uh Greg is annoying. So you can say that too, but also let us know uh, if you would possess an old man or a young woman. Nobody would ever. So. Nobody ever would say, "Greg, the milk chocolate of this podcast <laughs> is annoying." Nobody in a million. We called years. milk chocolate before. I like it. Um, but yeah, uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about while we're here? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Well, uh, Dan, what do we say at the end of every show? Don't forget to stab your friends. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>